Welcome to another teacher talk session tonight. Tonight we are going to have our 67th session. Yes, it's very great uh, for us. And tonight we are going to have another very special and very important educator from different parts of the world, just like other weeks. And tonight we are going to have the founder of SR Teaching Learning and International Teacher Training Company and the international also TESOL trainer, an international IELTS instructor, teacher trainer, and IELTS speaking examiner, and also his international uh, conference presenter, Samet Samedo. Yes, he is going to be with us tonight. I'm so excited that I have him here. So let me invite him to our session, and I'm sure that you are all going to uh, wait for this time. Yes, there he is. When he comes, we are going to start. There he is. Hello. Uh, hello, hello, dear hello. Hello, hello. It's hello. great. It's uh, it's great to see you. So much. wonderful, wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank and... you for inviting. Thank you for inviting. That's my <laughs> thank you very I much. Do appreciate. And you are very special uh, for us and that you are here for us tonight and i would like to say thank you one more time to accept my invitation to teacher talks it's great honor to have you here as my guest summer likewise likewise thank you very much i do appreciate your invitation <laughs> I'm really happy that you've invited me too. I mean, I uh, watched uh, several of videos uh, and you're really doing a great job, you know. Thank you very much for all these things. Thanks <laughs> thank a lot. You, thank you. Thanks thank you so very much. much. It's, really, it's really great to hear this from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, wow. I know that we have lots of things to talk tonight. And so I don't want to take your time because we are all busy. And, mm. and also, it's. I think it's... it's around 10 o'clock in Baku so yes. when we when we finish our live session it's going to be really late uh, so right, let's no start if you are ready okay i'm i'm ready I'm okay ready. and i know i know about you but maybe our audiences would like to know about you so can you tell us about <laughs> yourself please and a bit about your experiences too all right, so uh, my name is, as you mentioned, Samad Samadov. I come from Baku, Azerbaijan. And uh, basically, I mean, as you, I uh, thank you very much, by the way, for that introduction. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, um, I've been basically in education uh, for about 20 years now, and I've been teaching. Uh, English to different levels uh, with, I mean, to students with different uh, backgrounds uh, and I've been teaching English in 14 countries. So, uh, and at the moment, uh, so that's about eight years that uh, I own uh, the international uh, teacher development company, SR, Teaching and Learning, and I'm the founder of that company. So, as well as um, I'm IELTS International Instructor. That's, but I'm trying to be a real teacher, to be honest. That's my passion. <laughs> I this see. Is, yeah, yeah, this is, this is uh, much more difficult just to be just an instructor, okay? Being a teacher is really tough job. I see. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you. I know that we all know that you are really the great <laughs> one. Oh, you are great Thank now. You. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. so mm -hmm. and my next question is about again is about your own education. So, what was your turning point or points in your own education? Well, uh, to be honest, <laughs> that's kind of a bit uh, sophisticated question. Uh, let me just think. I mean. Uh, Talking about my own education, uh, to be honest, I graduated from university as a lawyer and I had never wow. uh, thought about coming to teaching. But that's the life, you know, and uh, I started my career when I was a university student as a translator in different oil companies. But my first job place was American Embassy here uh, in Baku. I mean, I used to work as a translator. So and then uh, things uh, 
turned uh, out that um, I don't know the life brought me to teaching and to, to be honest that because of I met a fantastic teacher in my life a real teacher with capital letters um, after meeting him so he just told me that uh, it's I mean you'd better you'd better become or try to be a teacher so and uh, you know and I decided just to give a shot and uh, you know that was my to be honest that was uh, a really turning point in my life that uh, I decided uh, you know to change my profile and I entered let's say to my second university uh, about English philology and uh, you know I I see they say that I became uh, a, a small teacher <laughs> but it's really great moment. I like to, it's really turning points for uh, <laughs> for yeah. your life in your yes, own education. Absolutely. Thank you very much for sharing yeah. that moment with us, Samet. And you. I wonder also another thing. <clears throat> and what is your philosophy of teaching? So this is a very interesting question too. Why, why, why? <laughs> Mashallah, today the questions are really kind of you know. I, yeah, uh, that, that's first of all. You know, I'd like to say that. Uh, that's a very good thing that uh, the sessions, I mean, your sessions are called uh, teacher talks. And here we can, we can share our, um, not only experience, but also like our feelings about the job that we are doing. And um, exactly. of course, uh, we try to be uh, as sincere as possible here in these talks, because I really watched a few uh, educators uh, who were really brilliant and famous as well. Uh, coming to my philosophy, so I don't know, um, is it all correct to call it philosophy or not, but I'd like just to mention uh, Jalal ad-Din Rumi's uh, words. Uh, he says that uh, you are seeking what is seeking you. So wow. uh, the, the thing in my uh, teaching, I mean, in terms of philosophy of teaching, is that uh, any teacher basically in teaching is seeking him or herself because we want to find ourselves in this profession, uh, which is mm -hmm. pretty much a complicated, sophisticated and honorable profession. We know that teachers all around the world uh, are very much respected, you know, in different exactly. cultures. As I noticed, uh, I used to work in uh, 14 countries. I met uh, fantastic teachers, you know, really dedicated, really devoted to their uh, profession. And uh, they mainly, I mean, what I learned basically is to become a useful person, right? So exactly. teaching is more about... Uh, becoming a person uh, who will give some, let's say, uh, you know, any use to society. And if you can do that, so you can call yourself happy. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Samet, about it. Thank you. So my next question is about the, the company that you have. I know that SR Teaching and Learning Company is very successful one. So can you tell us about your company, SR Teaching and Learning, and how did you decide to start this company? And what was your aim? Well, thank you for this question. Uh, you know, I used to work as a test maker in a state exam center here in Baku. Uh, for the Department uh, of uh, English Language uh, Tests. And uh, I was involved in uh, creating, constructing tests for different national exams. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time I started traveling a lot, I mean, uh, to different countries. Uh, and, uh, you know, I um, basically to learn more about uh, assessment systems uh, in different countries yeah. and uh, and of course uh, during all these trips uh, I encountered um, 
so many interesting things uh, that uh, I, uh, I mean, I felt like uh, gaps in the education system uh, of my country here in Azerbaijan. And then I noticed that in many other countries uh, too. So, um, uh, you know, uh, what I felt that uh, teachers really needs a real professional development. It's not just only mm -hmm. to take a piece of paper, which is called <laughs> certificate, right? So, but that is more about uh, becoming a real professional. So uh, who is a real professional? I ask myself when we talk about teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. is, a, is a professional the one who holds lots of certificates, international papers, or the one uh, the one who really can, you know, uh, let's say, have this, have, have this influence on his or her student. Because, uh, you know, and uh, investigating all these things, uh, I ended up like, uh, why not to open a company uh, which will support teachers and bring them together uh, from different countries to share, to care uh, about teaching and learning. Because, uh, you know, uh, the name of the company, SR, you know, it, uh, it stands for special resources. Uh, and, you know, for all our life, uh, we whether teach or learn. So, and <clears throat> basically teaching starts uh, with learning. You cannot teach anything. Uh, unless you learn. And uh, I uh, basically established this company in 2012 here in Baku. And then it's uh, kind of, I started uh, running different uh, seminars in different countries. And yeah. not long ago, uh, it uh, became already international company, and at the moment we've got uh, 14 representatives, official representatives of uh, our company, in uh, consequently in 14 countries. I see, for example, mm -hmm. I, I see one of them, uh, uh, dear Dr. Tamara Delitze. <laughs> you know, yeah, she's amazing. Great. Right, right. It's great. She, yeah, she is, by the way, our official representative in Georgia, Batumi. Uh -huh. I understand. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much, you. Samet. And can you uh, can you tell us about uh, the courses you provide to the teachers and how can they join the courses? Well, uh, we do run uh, different courses, different teach development courses. Uh, but this year, uh, you know, frankly speaking, we decided to uh, to run. Uh, courses, basically exam-oriented ones. So um, like uh, IELTS course, TKT CLEAL courses, and not only, not only, we also have like short courses uh, on different topics. Uh, I mean, uh, working with uh, teachers for young learners, uh, whatever. But uh, at the moment, uh, our TKT CLEAL with uh, fantastic trainer, uh, Evgenia Tatarova, Eva Tatarova, uh, our official manager of SR teaching in Ukraine. We are going to run a course with her. It's just about to start 14th uh, September. And then next Great. month, we're, yeah, we are going to start our uh, fifth uh, IELTS uh, instructor course. Uh, that's already thief and uh, a good thing about that uh, all our courses are um, really internationally participated you know we always have mm -hmm. uh, teachers from different parts of the world and in order to join the courses uh, you know uh, the wishers just uh, can follow us uh, through our social media uh, we've already started registration uh, for all the courses that uh, we intend to run uh, this uh, year. I see. All right. Thank you very much, Samet, about Thank the you. information about the courses. Actually, you have already given a number about your representatives. My next question is about, like, do you have 
any representative in other countries as I start teaching and learning and what are the benefits of it? Yeah, the thing is that uh, we've, got, uh, we've got 14 representatives uh, so far, but uh, believe me, we've got uh, lots of, um, I mean, letters, uh, emails from different uh, countries uh, who really want to become, uh, you know, uh, in, you know, I wouldn't say uh, only representatives, but... <coughs> Uh, to be in the partnership with us. Uh, yeah. We've just started partnership with uh, absolutely newly uh, designed a TESOL uh, course, uh, I mean TESOL Academy, uh, which is Australian brands. Uh, and yeah. uh, with Rod Ellis, I mean, who is the advisor, we had him yesterday on the webinar. So, uh, and um, yeah, uh, so Morocco, Argentine, Brazil, uh, these three countries, uh, I mean, are on the list uh, that we want to uh, sign the contract uh, or for uh, representation. Uh, coming to the benefits, uh, of course, you know, um, I would, you know, that's not because, I mean, uh, we... Uh, basically head up this company but frankly speaking that mainly about trust so teachers yeah. can trust the quality of our courses because we always mm -hmm. uh, we always try to involve uh, trainers who are pretty much uh, not only famous okay with their names but uh, they really uh, professionals of uh, their jobs like Andrew Walkley, Hugh Della. I mean, there are lots of them. Paul lots Harvey, of. you know, again, Eva Tatarova, you know, uh, Tamar Delidze, you know, all, all these trainers are uh, really uh, professionals uh, of uh, the thing that they are doing. And uh, the benefits, another benefit is that, of course, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to talk here about the financial part of that, uh, but uh, first of all, SR gives them a real uh, opportunity uh, to become internationally uh, recognized uh, from, yeah. you know, and people exactly. from different mm -hmm. uh, parts of the world uh, can attend their courses and can they, uh, and they can know not only about uh, the trainer, but also about the country and uh, all the staff. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, there are some uh, financial uh, parts of that, uh, which also is okay, I think. Yeah, of course, of course, IT. Thank you very much. Thank you very much okay. for sharing your ideas about it, Samet. So, my next question is about the international exams. Do you mm -hmm. provide any international exam? Of course, you provide it to the students, teachers, and other people that they start teaching and learning. If yes, what are they? Can you give us some information about them? You know, uh, here back in Baku, uh, we uh, are the official Cambridge Preparation Centre and we mainly prepare our students to different Cambridge uh, exams, including, uh, I mean, IELTS, mainly, I mean, we focus at the moment mainly on IELTS, and, but also we uh, have, again, key exam, I mean, CAT, PET, FCE, all the stuff. Uh, so we, uh, we also uh, have uh, uh, some preparatory courses for TIFL. And uh, yeah, uh, these are the main exams that we try to uh, focus on. And apart from that, we also uh, have, I mean, involved in uh, local national exams, right? So mm. we do prepare and uh, I'm one of the advisors uh, for uh, test departments in Azerbaijan, I mean, a state exam center. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I, I would like to ask another question about IELTS. I know that you are a very strong educator with IELTS. So mm -hmm. can you tell us about the benefits of IELTS? If we get this exam, where can we use it and what is or are the benefits of IELTS exam to us? Well, uh, it's obvious that uh, IELTS is the most popular exam in the world. Absolutely. Uh, 
true thing that uh, the certificate, I mean, the IELTS certificate is accepted everywhere in the world. Uh, so, and uh, students or basically test takers, they uh, take the test uh, whether to immigrate, to study uh, somewhere abroad uh, or uh, to work and live. So, and, you know, uh, considering now um, the, the situation in the life, I mean, in the world, uh, people kind of uh, a bit in a rush, you know, they want to, uh, they want to have different uh, certificates or uh, some pieces of paper will, which will ensure their uh, future perspectives. So that's I why see. taking uh -huh. IELTS, taking IELTS might be the best, the best tool for them, uh, whether to study, uh, to live or work abroad. And in some countries, including Azerbaijan, uh, you know, uh, some international schools, they require uh, the IELTS result from teachers, right? So if you want uh -huh. to, if you want to uh, become a teacher in an, any international school here, now you need to uh, take the IELTS exam. And it happens in, uh, I mean, in many countries at the moment, because uh, IELTS basically shows um, the real level, the real level uh, of the person and because it tests all four skills and if you wish uh, again you can take whether academic or general training one and apart from that mm -hmm. there is also less known uh, but life skills uh, which is mainly I mean it's also uh, the third module of the IELTS which is mainly only for uh, migration purposes and yeah that, that's really you know getting more and more popular in many countries oh, i see thank you very much thank you very much for the inform information about ielts mm -hmm. so we okay. have now we have really uh, sufficient enough information about the ielts thank, thank you. you and now i would like to move Another uh, question, but there is a question, by the way. Uh, how do you think the certificate is the main for teaching? Huh. Well, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, for me, uh, teaching, you know, again, as I told you, well, uh, you know, uh, in my real teaching, many things, things changed uh, after my visit uh, to Finland. Uh, you know, uh, what, I, uh, what I really found out there that uh, teaching is not just transferring information from one brain to another, right? It's more about discovering a student's potential. I'd say uh -huh. this is this is the this is the most uh, complicated thing for all teachers. We mainly try to uh, you know stick to the course books, and we you know we, even you know uh, unconsciously we kind of teach the units the the units of the course book, and we do not care about. Uh, a, a real st student's potential. Once you once you find your student's potential, it means like you did uh, most part of the job, right? And and uh, but uh, not every teacher is ready for that, and most of them are kind of reluctant uh, to be uh, more involved in real teaching, which is for me. Uh, is again discovering and defining uh, a real mm -hmm. uh, student's potential and a talent, uh, but they uh, try to get the certificates right. Uh, I mean, um, this is uh, that's that's a good thing. I mean, in terms of having international certificates, but that's not enough. If when mm -hmm. when you when you exactly. are in the classroom, when you are in the classroom. And uh, when you feel that your certificate cannot mm -hmm. help you, right? So uh, you, maybe exactly that time you will understand that having just certificate uh, 
uh, is not enough. Not so enough. you need, yeah, you need, you need something more, something real more, you know. I and for, let's say, you know, uh, to be honest, um, you know, uh, I, I was a big fan of Ken Robinson. And I remember his words, uh, like, he said that the best tool of a teacher is a student's question. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the best question of a student is curiosity. Curiosity, exactly. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, a really, that's a really interesting thing, you know. Uh, I mean, in order to keep your students always engaged and motivated, sometimes we should create this curiosity, right? Yeah. So teacher, basically, I would say, is uh, kind of an organizer of the learning process. Mm -hmm. And for that, if you really love your job, I mean, and if you really want to become a teacher, you should want that from your heart, not with, from your brain or with your brain. So certificates here uh, won't uh, help for me. I mean, I that's my personal opinion. Uh, I mean, I hold lots of international certificates uh, uh -huh. and they're okay. I do appreciate all this stuff. Uh, but again, for me, that's not enough. You should go to real professional in order to get real knowledge, real. Which, will, which will take you to the real world of teaching and learning. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Samet, for this answer. I think your answer is enough for <laughs> for the, our audiences. That's really yeah. great. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. And I would like to ask about my questions, but there is another question. I would mm -hmm. like to ask right. this from Mr. Um, Mrs. Tam Tamar Dolitze, Dr. Tamar Dolitze, asking, how can we ensure fair and objective assessment in digital EFL? She is asking. Well, EFL classroom. Okay, I'd say that's really complicated question. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, there are many tools now. There are many tools. To be honest, uh, I wasn't that uh, much involved in the assessment process uh, through uh, digital stuff. Uh, but uh, you know, again, this is the question of investigating. Uh, I guess. So if we say, for example, one way, uh, there are lots of uh, other options out there. So mm, that is why, um, you know, for me, for example, tests are the best uh, tools for uh, assessments in any educational process. But uh, everything depends on the quality uh, of a test. And many teachers, really, many teachers I mean, I know that for sure. Many teachers struggle with that. So we, uh, we, 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 we did not, when I say we, I mean some part of teachers, uh, not all, of course, uh, but um, they, tend to, they tend to teach uh, the tests sometimes mm -hmm. without, without deep uh, knowledge or deep understanding of international test uh, principles and the I assessment uh, criteria. This is the thing. And that's why now I think that uh, in terms of uh, digital assessment, uh, I guess that uh, it, it should be, it should be uh, worked out a lot still. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I even, uh, I'm sure that uh, Ms. Uh, Tamar de Lidz, uh, uh, I mean, she knows the answer better than me because she's more <laughs> involved in that. I see. Thank you very much, Samad. And I think she also said thank you for the answer, Samad. She said that. Thank you very much. And now I would like to ask you a very different question. I know that you're a very experienced teacher and you have lots of experiences about teaching and you face lots of people, students and teachers. So have you ever faced a very difficult student to teach or teacher to train and what happened and what was your reaction well well well, well i will i will never forget <laughs> i will never forget my uh, that experience in yemen in one of arab countries that was my first class when i entered the classroom and i saw nobody there uh, and uh, i was i was really shocked i was uh, i i mean i thought that maybe 
uh, I mean, I came not exactly at the same, I mean, at the time of my lesson, but I watched uh, at the clock and I saw that, no, that's my time to teach. <laughs> so, but there was nobody. I went to the director of studies and asked her what's happening, where are the students? And she said to me, uh, they are outside. I mean, and so I wanted to ask her why uh, she said to me, go and ask them. <laughs> so uh, that was, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd like to say that, that that was like really a good experience uh, in my uh, teaching career. And uh, those uh, 14 guys, uh, they were, they were, 12 years old uh, guys, you know, they were, I'd say, the most difficult students uh, for me. But uh, after a month, I mean, I could uh, bring them back to the classroom and we became really good friends with them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I, mean I, I just remember that uh, story. Uh, coming to teacher, uh, to be honest, I met... Uh, more difficult teachers rather than difficult students <laughs> uh, to work with to to work with teachers uh, i mean is more difficult not in terms of like uh, teaching them something it's another point but uh, sometimes you can meet um, people i'd say that basically uh, are away from teaching but <clears throat> about real teaching, that they uh, came to this teaching maybe just uh, by chance uh, and just from out of the blue, they found themselves in the classrooms. And, you know, yeah, I met those teachers a lot, but uh, thank goodness uh, that we, we tried always to have that positive and correct rapport uh, with Anyone that we met, uh -huh. this is part of teaching. To establish, to establish correct rapport. Exactly. Thank you very much, Samad. You said a very important word, which is rapport, because my next question is related with that word. So let me ask you that one. What's the importance of good rapport in the classroom? Well, uh, good rapport is really very essential. It's really crucial thing because, again, uh, you know, if you uh, if you cannot establish the is a good rapport with your student, uh, you can you can you you can say that you failed your teaching because uh, you know teachers basically, I'd say, are great actors right mm -hmm. so and in the classrooms uh, you know again uh, talking about my experience uh, i remember that uh, once in finland uh, we we were observing one uh, lesson uh, that was mathematic lesson <clears throat> and uh, what we noticed we noticed that one of the students, uh, she just stood up, uh, you know, I mean, teacher was uh, kind of lecturing something, explaining the new lesson. She stood up and uh, went to so-called rest corner in the classroom. And uh, I mean, of course, uh, we were kind of taken aback. And uh, because for me, in my experience, it was the first time that teacher didn't, uh, didn't do uh, anything like uh, she didn't uh, ask her to come back again to her seats or what else uh, absolutely anything uh, so she just went there uh, and uh, just until the uh, end of the lesson she was there after the lesson we asked the teacher I mean what happened why you didn't say anything to her like why she just stood up uh, mm -hmm. and went yeah. to that corner just uh, the teacher asked that you know but I uh, noted that, uh, that she, uh, she wasn't, let's say, uh, she wasn't aware about a new lesson, but I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, say anything against her behavior because for uh -huh. that moment, we never know, maybe she has some problems in her family, maybe so. 
maybe she's got kind of problem uh, that whatever you do, mathematics will not uh, come into her brain. So it's better to leave her alone. alone. For this reason, we have this so-called rest corner in the classrooms, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, that was another good example of this, for me, correct rapport with the students. Exactly. Thank you very much, by the way, for sharing this really nice moment about the report. It's really wonderful and it really has got lots of meaning about teaching and educating someone. Thank you. Thank you. And my next question, as we all know, as we know that, you know, that we have really struggling this COVID-19 uh, things for a long time, the more than a year, almost two years. Yeah, yeah. So, and we have... You know, we actually we have already, you know, the have the online courses and distance educations. But after the COVID-19, we move m mostly, I mean, totally to face to face from face to face to online education. So right. in this case, what I would like to ask about uh, your idea about distance education and what are the pros and cons of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, not going to lie, it was really difficult for me too, because, I mean, I never used uh, uh, any online, I'd say, almost never used any online uh, staff. I mean, in my teaching, I always have this uh, physical uh, interaction with my students uh, or teachers, right? So, and uh, when this uh, COVID started, uh, it was, uh, for me again, uh, it was a bit uh, hard to transfer to this uh, distant learning. Uh, but uh, let's say they were uh, teachers uh, who, who got used to that very, very easily, right? Uh, but for some, it took probably some uh, months, uh, you know, uh, in order to uh, transfer to... For all of us, I'd say, a new, a new type of teaching. And uh, talking about pros and cons, I'd say, you know, after a while, uh, most of us uh, kind of uh, really got used to online teaching. And even uh, it, this uh, stuff became uh, more comfortable and convenient mm -hmm. for us. And uh, in this way, uh, we could, like, even if I talk uh, about SR, uh, we could reach more uh, people through online uh, oh, rather, yeah. Than, yeah, rather than we could do that, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, through offline yeah. uh, stuff. So, <clears throat> of course, there are lots of uh, positives uh, in terms of, I mean, uh, online teaching, but coming exactly, I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, personally, uh, I, uh, f I mean, what I am doing, if I talk about my own courses, I mean, with the students, uh -huh. uh, okay. I teach only individual uh, classes. Uh, I mean, I train only individual classes for IELTS, I mean. So I don't have any groups, to be honest. Right? I mean, I, 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 I may have... Uh, but that will be only for a kind of uh, revision classes, right? So I have separate students and all of them, uh, they have individual classes, right? But for revision, I can uh, bring them together for a couple of uh, lessons. For me, for example, talking about international exams like IELTS, you know, you can get uh, more Effectiv mm -hmm. effectivity through individual lessons. That's my personal opinion. Because again, uh, I mean, uh, I do not teach uh, that long. I mean, I do not train uh, candidates that long. That is two or three months, two or three months, no more. And uh, because people, again, they spend money, uh, they don't want just uh, it, to it to be prolonged like uh, uh, for many uh, months. So that's why... For me, individual classes, uh, I mean, I'm talking again, exam preparation through online, I see. Yeah, uh -huh. might be more effective rather than in groups. And uh, group I working in exam preparation, for me, 
might be considered as a drawback of online uh, staff. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for you. your answer, Samad. So my, I really wonder what are you going to say about my next questions because all the educators giving really different and interesting answers to these questions. Here is the question. If you could have one superpower to use in the classroom, what would it be and how would it help you? Well, I would spread love. Uh-huh. <laughs> love to love, you know, uh, uh, for me again, you know, uh, I think that uh, uh, this is really difficult thing because today, uh, uh, unfortunately, our job has become more business oriented right and uh, uh-huh. we we mo- uh, we uh, think more about earning uh, some financial uh, stuff rather than putting <clears throat> all our efforts to bring up a human right and if in 20th century uh, they said that um, beauty will save the world i would say 20 in 21st century teachers are the best tools that really may save this world right and yeah. here we should bring this uh, you know students should understand the necessity of learning and uh, if it is kind of a must you know if you mm-hmm. if if a student is sent to a classroom I don't think that uh, he will love uh, doing what is he doing. But when a student goes to a lesson, right, and that mainly because of a teacher input, because teacher could uh, translate, could transfer this uh, necessity of learning into the hearts of his students, then teaching will become uh much much easier you know again uh, all students they are all talented uh, our job is to define to discover this talent believe me i, I mean see. from my own experience i i really uh, so many talented students you know today i am not proud of myself i'm mainly proud of my students because and it's not that important right uh, i mean you know once a year for example they call me and just uh, like just talking with them for a short period of time makes me really not only just happy but kind of uh, satisfied in terms of mm-hmm. things that we are doing and if i if i had that power i would definitely bring to the classroom the love the love to teaching and learning wonderful Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much for this answer. Wonderful. And my next question is going to be about the first week of the school. And what can you suggest to the teachers for the first week of the school year? Wow. To establish good rapport with students, I'd say. Mm, wonderful. Mm, <laughs> that's the thing I say. All yeah. right. Great. Yeah, we all they all need it and we all need that rapport with the students. They all need it. Before all right. teaching them, we need to create a really good rapport with the students, I think. Definitely. After that teaching comes, I think. Because exactly. if the students if the student loves you, of course. They love your lesson and they want to learn more about uh, you. Again, again one more thing here, you know, I'd like just to emphasize is that we should try make our students again my personal opinion we should try sure, to sure. make our students love the process of learning it's not necessarily to have them love us personally yeah exactly mm-hmm. our job is to make them love the learning process right to mm-hmm. respect the learning process this is the my, for me again uh, this is more important yeah i totally agree with you i totally agree with you thank you very much And okay. let's move to another question. So <laughs> my next question is about, you know, that uh, about the ELT world, you know, the every day, maybe every week or every month, all the different trends comes out. So which learning trends capture your attention the most and why? For example, mobile learning, project-based learning, task-based learning, 
game-based learning or etc i would say for me to be honest i would uh i would prefer task-based learning or task-based for me for mm -hmm. me uh, because you know in today's world uh people uh, they uh, tend to uh, tend to learn like uh, uh, or tend to develop their Uh, critical thinking and uh, all this problem solving uh, stuff and uh, through task based <clears throat> learning i guess uh, we can get more rather than uh, some traditional approaches like you mm -hmm. mentioned so uh, and i in my teaching uh, from time to time i try to use elements of uh, task based learning more again because exam oriented classes they are a bit different because if we talk about uh, general english classes the classes here are more relaxed and flexible and uh, you know a student uh, does not have a specific goal in mind but uh -huh. in the exam uh, i mean in, in the classes uh, where english is uh, needed to take the exam the orientation is real is a bit different because you should strictly stick to the curriculum because you know the exact date when your student is going to take the exam so that's why uh, these classes uh, here should be appropriately uh, kind of structured in a way that your students mm -hmm. will get uh, the highest uh, band score and in my exam oriented classes i i use mainly again task based approach rather task -based than the others approach. rather than the others i see thank you very much i really also like the task based and the project based they are really yeah. good to use in the classroom and azra is asking a question how we can apply action research in our online classes the most challenging but is it uh, have you got anything to say about it no to be honest i didn't get the question even correctly how 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 can we apply action research in our online classes the most challenging one Well, yes, to be honest, I'm not the one who could answer this question because it's not basically my uh, profile. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, probably uh, one of your next guests will be uh, <laughs> yeah, more professional. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, more, more professional okay, than then. that. No problem. Okay, then. So let's let's move to another question. So, Samad, what do you find most frustrating and rewarding about teaching and learning aha uh -huh. if we talk about frustration if we talk about <laughs> frustration well uh, many things uh, can be counted here but sometimes i would say parents approach parents attitudes you know uh, when you work with uh, basically uh, you know especially i say especially financially independent people mm -hmm. uh, i mean it's it's really easy uh, to negotiate with them or uh, to explain them the real situation uh, i mean because like again if i talk about my own classes you can see that uh, you know a student um, i mean he's uh, 45 years old right or he may be 30 years old a pretty much adult person and uh, he is responsible for all his um, actions let's say so it's easy to even establish rapport with them is easier but when a parent uh, brings uh, his child to you here i mean there are some really frustrating points uh, exactly. when they think that you know well I pay you and I want that in three months my uh, son or daughter become fluent in English. It's like if, you know, when, uh, when a guy uh, enters in the gym, he sees there a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> and he says that in a month I want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So and you cannot explain him anything, right? So this is basically about uh, 
uh, I'd say about frustration, coming to uh, rewarding. Uh, of course, uh, well, you know, to be honest with you, uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't like just to look kind of noticed, but uh, I have never failed any student uh, in the exam preparation, including the IELTS. And the result, of course, always are rewarding and uh, they motivate me uh, for much better. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? I think uh, Samat, there is a problem with Samat's connection, I think. Hello? Can you hear me? Samat, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? I think he can't hear us. Hello. Oh, let me invite him again. Just a moment. Let me invite him again. There's a problem. Sorry for this connection problem. He was talking about... Hello? Hello, hello. I'm sorry. Probably that's about internet connection. Yeah, now it's okay. We... Can you hear can me? You... Yes, we can now. All right. Okay, great. Well, uh, yes, uh, you know, and when uh, your students uh, get this result, like the highest result, like 8, 8.5, you know, of course, this is the best rewarding uh, for mm. a teacher. And uh, to be honest, this is the thing that I kind of uh, decided uh, to make myself more involved in uh, teaching for exams. Uh, because again, uh, you know, when you see the result, right? So you know that's okay. So this is your, um, let's say, road and, you know, your a and you know your B point, so uh, and it's mm -hmm. easy uh, to uh, basically to see the progress of your students. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Samet. This this my next question is. By the way, that just a couple questions left. The time flies. By the way, right. <laughs> just two or three questions left. But I would like to ask you these questions as a company <sighs> owner. As like as, as our teaching and learning company, so this is a kind of related with the director's question. Like, how can how can the directors of the schools motivate their teachers and stop teacher burnout? Oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> I used to work. I used to work as a director in. Really? Uh, wow. Okay, yeah. so it's the easy question okay. for you to answer. <laughs> so no, oh, it's the it's the it's the hardest question I'd say. <laughs> well, uh, I think that uh, you know you should uh, you should do more rather than say. Uh, and everything starts with a feeling of uh, responsibility. Well, people, uh -huh. I mean, uh, who know me, they know that, so no one can say that I was late for a single school day. So I was always earlier than everybody. Uh, like, I was never late for any, any day, absolutely. Uh, and... <clears throat> Uh, you should, a uh, director of school should first should respect absolutely all his or her staff and teach the responsibility as well as accountability. And if you, if you can teach this responsibility, there will be no burnout. And uh -huh. you are the first person whom you should teach 
the responsibility. You should start from yourself, okay? If you are responsible, so then all your staff will be responsible. And there will be no exactly. need to think about any burnouts. Yeah, oh, I see. Thank you very much for this great answer to this question as a <laughs> director and the owner of a company. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. Samet. So, and my next question is about, again, ELT. So, what can you suggest us to read about ELT? Can you give us some one or two examples to read? Well, I would say for me, I would say if we talk about some pedagogical approaches uh, in the classrooms, go for Ken Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he's, he's really genius in terms of uh, pedagogy. I would say for me, again, he, for me, he's the most respected educator. Is the most, uh, uh, and if you, if for, for those who know or, or who don't know him, it's better just to Google, watch his some um, even TED videos, and then he also uh, he's got. Uh, so he passed away, by the way, uh, not that long ago, but uh, yes. he's got a few books uh, which are really worth. Uh, for that reason, uh, uh, for me again, Ken Robinson and is in the first place. Then, of course, uh, there are plenty of stuff there. And this question, by the way, uh, will work better for Eva Tatarova. So <laughs> she's crazy about reading all the stuff in the world of ELT. Wonderful. Creative School is great. His book, uh, Ludo Drama says his book, Creative Schools, is great. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, by the way, my, my, my greetings to uh, Ludo Drama. Yeah. To Argentina. <laughs> He's also here from Argentina. Thank you very much to join us tonight and to everybody who joins here. And then uh, only two questions left, Samad, to answer. Then I'll try. you are free. We are all free. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then here is the question. What are your favorite three websites to suggest to use in teaching? If you would like to say, you can say more. Oh, my goodness. So at the moment, I'm that much involved in this examination staff. I mean, assessment staff. And uh, I don't think that the websites that I'm going to say will be that much familiar with the audience, uh, I mean, that are watching us. So um, I, again, uh, I try to use more from uh, British Council staff from IDP, mm -hmm. from IDP. And uh, again, because I'm more... Um, Involved again in exam preparation, IELTS Essential, I mean, dot com uh, is one of the best tools for teachers who, uh, who prepare their students to take the IELTS exams. I see. All right. Thank you very much for this two website to follow. Thank you. And here is the last question. Yes. Are you ready for yeah. it? <laughs> yes. Sure. Okay. Great. And the most difficult one. What is your motto? Wow. Well, uh, the motto of a company, uh, go here, saying here, we mean SR. Go here, uh, sorry, come here, come here, and go everywhere. So uh, come to SR and then go everywhere. By my personal, again, I started with uh, words uh, from... Jalal Adin Rumi, who says again, you are seeking what is seeking you. I see. Wonderful. You are seeking what is seeking you. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Samad. All right. Thank you. That's all, Thank that's you. all my Thank questions you very much. for tonight. And would you like to add uh, anything else to our live session before ending it? So what I'd like just to say again, you know, uh, dear Volkan, believe me that you're really doing a great job, you know. I mean, Thank that's you. already a 67th, I guess, right? 67th, 67th. yeah. 67th. 67th. Yeah, I know, what, I know what's that. I mean, <laughs> uh, I know what's that. I know, I mean, how hard this work is. So 
That's why uh, everything that you are doing, this is uh, in the sake of uh, all our teachers. And I know exactly. that you are doing lots of things to support teachers from different parts of the world. And thank you very much again for having me here, for inviting me here. It's so a great honor. we should, yeah, you know, the same, absolutely likewise. And I want to say thank you very much for uh, everybody. Uh, who uh, joined us today. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So stay in touch and see you soon. Thanks a lot. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody. And I would like, I would like to say one more time to thank you to Samed Samedov. And he was with us tonight and he spent his time and he shared his knowledge and suggestions. That was really great. We learned a lot from him tonight. And I, we had a really joyful session and i hope that he had a joyful session like us and uh, it was really great thank you. thank you very much one more time and i, I would okay. like to say uh, take care of yourselves and we are going to be here next week at the okay. same time on the same day with another educator take care of yourselves good evening good afternoon all... good morning all... wherever you are all the best as you say until all next time bye bye, bye bye and peace bye -bye. everybody bye bye, bye, -bye.